200 euro PC comes to a conclusion. We left with an underclocked CPU inside a crummy computer case. I would like to say that that case was a bad buy. It had no air intakes. I even tried to dremel out space to insert fans without any luck. The lack of airflow meant that it wouldn't run without leaving it out in the open. But... That case came with an Enforce 2 motherboard. As a classic motherboard for its time, was the best in its class. It's well sought after by enthusiasts for retro PC builds. That Enforce 2, it was worth something. They easily go for over 100 euros on eBay. I ended up selling mine for just 50, simply because the retro PC market is pretty limited and it's a very slow market. It, if I were to let it sit, it might have gone for more. I'm really happy with that little surprise. What about the heatsink we got? You get what you pay for. It was the cheapest heatsink that claimed to handle the TDP of the 8350. The cut of the metal block is rough, which leaves gaps where air insulates. It's not great. You can mitigate it by adding just a little bit more thermal paste than you normally would. And you know what? Yes, it runs hot. Yeah, but it doesn't overheat it is still a bit too close to that thermal threshold, but not quite there. I can now run under a full load for extended periods of time. Can I recommend the heatsink? No, it barely does the job. If you can, try to spend a little bit extra on this piece. Unless, like me, you absolutely want to cut cost as low as possible. Just be warned, it's a little bit too close for comfort. So what is next? The case. In my head, I had mixed up form factors, and I believed that there was no other option than to go on to a full ATX case. And a full ATX case was just way out of my price range. Until... I remembered... Oh... Wait... ATX motherboards fit in mid-tower cases. I put an order on the second cheapest case on the market at 32 euros. Why not the cheapest case? Those 5 extra euros get you a separate power supply chamber, space for 120mm fans, and open room to fit larger graphics cards. Well worth it. Let's do it! A desktop computer transplant. Let's remove my PC from its old home like the hermit crab that it is, and give it a new shell. The, the motherboard risers were a bit tough to tighten in, but not a huge issue. Power supply slides in incredibly easily. The fittings on the motherboard feel a bit tight, but we can work our way around until it fits nice and snug. It has a nice vertical mount for the SSD. If you recall, I'm not using an SSD, but I'm using an old cheap laptop hard disk drive. And at this point you might have asked, hey, isn't that gonna be a bottleneck? And I would tell you, it depends. Will boot times and load times suffer? Yes. But that's not the most important thing to me. Or more so, I don't see enough value in faster load times for me to spend more money on an SSD. Once Windows loads, once Adobe Premiere is on screen, or once I start playing that new game, everything will run smooth. Why? Programs operate in RAM. An SSD might, for example, make that web browser pop up instantly, but it won't make it run any faster. So if there is a part that you're going to be looking on skimping on, this might be it. And of course, if you're working with media, if you're working with video, or if you have a lot of games, you might still end up using a hard disk drive because of the much larger size. Many people do a SSD slash hard disk drive setup, and that's, all, all, and that's also an option. Just remember that all comes at an additional cost. And because we are trying to build the cheapest, most powerful desktop for the money, this will be what we're sticking with. Cable management helps keep the PC looking sleek by hiding all those cables in the back of the case. Too bad we don't have a window to peer in. There it is. Thing of beauty. Finally. It is complete. But whoa, wait, something else changed in there. Well, yeah, six months passed. We put in 16 gigabytes of RAM and that was, and that went in at 45 euros. 
We sold 4 gigabytes of RAM for 20 euros. The GTX 560 was sold for 20 euros. A more powerful GTX 670 was purchased for 65 euros. And, and not only that, a 22 inch monitor free of charge. Remember, if you live in a city, monitors are tossed out all the time. If you're happy with 1080p or close to 1080p resolution, you can likely find something someone is tossing out. Yes, I know, 4K is all the rage now, and a lot of you want to jump in at 4K. And admittedly, 4K screens are nice, especially 4K OLED screens, but it all comes at a cost. And not just of the monitor, but the hardware you have to push it. I can almost guarantee that you will not be enjoying gaming on a 4K monitor if you don't have that massively powerful system to push that 4K resolution. And for that reason, even if I'm going to be playing around with 4K video content, and I admit that 4K resolution looks absolutely fantastic, I don't think I'll be updating anytime soon. Both the additional cost and the performance hit are just not worth it. Not for this setup. So what do we have? We left off last time at 200 euros. We sold the Enforce 2 motherboard for 50 euros. We spent 32 euros on a new case. We spent 45 euros on RAM. We sold RAM for 20 euros. We sold a graphics card for 20 euros. We got a 65 euro graphics card. And that all comes out to a total of 220 euros. And for the heck of it, if you want to include mileage on the 90 kilometers traveled, at about 40 cents a kilometer, we could say that's another 36 euros. Or 256 euros total with mileage. Uh, what a nice number, 256. And what did I get for this price? Here are the quick specs. An Asus Sabertooth 990FX motherboard, an AMD FX 8350 8 core processor, a GTX 670 GPU with 2GB of onboard memory, 20GB of RAM, a 500GB hard drive, and a 22-inch monitor. For 220 euros, that is a killer deal. I could even throw in an SSD, and it would still be an incredible price. That AMD processor is not going to be for everyone though, but if you are doing any sort of multimedia work, those 8 cores are going to tear right through it. I guess you guys want to benchmark? Just for the sake of the video, I'll do one. And there it is. And how well does it stack up against an in-store purchase? Well, I, I didn't put too much research into it. But let's say, for example, I got this in the mail. Nobody buys desktops anymore. As you see here, there's only one. And the only one is priced at 279 euros. It has an absolute joke of a processor, the Celeron J3060. Integrated graphics and 4 gigabytes of RAM. The only redeeming quality that it has is that it is physically small. And mind you, it's the desktop only, no monitor. Yeah, but what else might the typical consumer buy? How about this 1000 euro laptop? The Asus FX 503VD. But wait Gizmo, you can't bring a laptop into a desktop fight. It's not fair. Yes, you're right. And no, here's the thing, because People, people are buying laptops, and when in some cases, they might actually do better with a desktop. The question always to ask is, do you need that level of mobility? Some of you will, most of you won't. You probably have a smartphone that'll do everything you need to do on the move. Read a PDF document, take notes, or communicate with people. Now again, I bring it up because most consumers are looking to buy a laptop. The desktop market for consumers is just not as attractive as it used to be. And I'm not telling you not to get a laptop. What I'm saying is that you just need to take a second to evaluate your needs. Because this is what a brand new laptop at 1000 euros gets you. You get an Intel Core i5 7300HQ processor, an NVIDIA GTX 1050 mobile, 8 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, and a terabyte of hard disk space. And if we go and we look a little bit more into it, that 7300HQ 
Um, I might say, you might argue maybe it's on par with 8350. Uh, AMD processors are a little bit tricky to compare. The Intel 7300HQ's individual cores will definitely perform better, but it only has four cores, and the 8350 has eight cores. So especially with multimedia creation, that AMD processor will perform way better. Older games might also perform better on that Intel 7300HQ, but keep in mind that the newer titles that are coming out are being optimized for multi-core performance. That GTX 1050 is actually quite a bit slower than our GTX 670. And although the system uses faster DDR4 memory, it only comes with 8GB compared to our 20GB. And do consider that memory speeds have never been a major bottleneck in a system. And of course, yes, the one terabyte hard drive. It's twice what we have in our system. It's probably a little bit faster, so it's got us there. But then again, our system costs 780 euros less. So, um, yeah. In my own opinion, the laptop market has stagnated a little bit, and although improvements in battery life and performance do come every year, you'd be far better off with your money looking for a business class laptop on the used market. And here's the video I did on that topic. Anyway, moving forward, how does it compare to a proper pre-built desktop? I think that might be the question that we need to look at. And we'll look at an Acer Aspire TC780. It's 900 euros, and that's only about 100 euros cheaper than our laptop. But it's missing a monitor. So we're gonna have to buy the cheapest one we can find. Bam. Back at 1,000 euros. <laughs> no wonder no one wants to buy a desktop anymore. But what's that get you? It's gotta be better than a laptop, right? Eh, kind of, a little bit. There is an upgrade on the processor. It, it will beat our system at single core performance. It's still not able to match the 8350's multi-core performance. It has the same amount and type of RAM as the laptop, the same issue, less RAM, maybe it's a little faster RAM, but RAM speeds have never been a major bottleneck, and it's just not a major performance metric. What is usually more important is the amount of RAM, and until a limit of course. The desktop version of the GTX 1050 is faster than the mobile variant, but it still falls behind our GTX 670. And of course, it does have a nice, fast SSD and HDD combo, which admittedly is a nicer setup. But then again, a faster SSD and HDD don't cost 708 euros, which is the price difference that we've built our system for. And hey, if you go out and you set out to build a system yourself, maybe you can get a better deal than I did. Maybe you'll get a worse deal. I still think you will save a bit of cash. I know it's not for everyone. This is not a video to bash pre-built computer system. They do serve a purpose. It's for a consumer who just might not have the time or want to spend the time on building their own computer. Yet even with that said, it's still good to see the difference. And for a purchase that you're gonna have around for at least a couple of years, why not? Hey, but PC life doesn't end for the PC builder. What's my next upgrade? The RAM. Hey Gizmo, isn't 20 gigabytes enough? And I'll be like, well, I want to top out at 32 gigs. 3D animation programs like Maya and special effects programs like After Effects need a lot of RAM. Especially if I'm planning to do any 4K work and that will definitely help. That's to say that most of you out there you probably don't need that much RAM. I would recommend 16 gigabytes for most people. And after that upgrade, uh, that's probably it. I'm happy with the graphics card I have. I'm happy with the processor I have. I won't be looking at making any more upgrades. Whenever the next system comes, it'll be a, I, I think I'll end up doing a brand new build. For my purposes and for my needs, I could probably get at least another two years out of this build. And, and who knows? With the way that tech is moving nowadays, it might even be longer. We've reached a point where where most consumers don't need the greatest and the latest and the fastest. And that's to say the hardware and technology, yeah, they're improving every year, things are getting faster. But I feel like the software hasn't quite matched. Not not at least the way it used to. Which is a good thing which, in my opinion, is a good thing. It means that more people can have a computer, more more people are not left behind. But that's enough. That's the end of this video. 
the 200 euro PC is complete and obviously it didn't come out for 200 euros, 220 euros or if you want to argue with gas and all that, 256 euros. So a little bit over our initial budget and part is because it's my PC and there are some parts I wanted to spend more money on. But the point is for 220 euros, we built this and there's no reason why you can't do the same. So leave a comment if you like this video. Do hit that like button. If you have any questions, let me know. If you have any questions about your own build, if you have any problems or if you're working on your own build and you, you want to ask something, feel free to ask. I encourage you to look into building your own computer. Otherwise, let your thoughts known. Share the video if you think it's shareable. And as always, no matter where you are in this world, do have a good day, do have a good night, and do have a good morning. Bye-bye. Hey, YouTube told me that I should tell you to click on that bell icon if you enjoy my videos. Otherwise, make sure you have a good day, good morning, and a good night. Bye-bye.